In this problem, we have to find the intervals where this function is increasing and decreasing and all relative extrema. So to start this problem, we'll take the derivative and set it equal to zero. That's always the first step. So f prime of x is equal to, so the derivative of x squared is simply 2x. Using the power rule, right? you bring down the 2 and subtract 1. And the derivative of negative 6x is negative 6. So step 1 is to find the critical numbers. So this is never undefined. So now we simply set it equal to 0. All right, if you add 6 to both sides, that gives us 2x equals 6. And dividing by 2 on both sides will give us x equals 3. So this is our critical number. This is our cn. So step one in these problems, just take the derivative and set it equal to 0. All right, so now to find out where it's increasing and decreasing and to find all relative extrema, um, just draw a little number line and plot your critical number, so 3. And then you pick test points. Okay, So um, you pick any number you like that is uh, over here that is smaller than um, 3. So how about 0? So let's plug that in to the derivative. So it will be 2 times 0 minus 6, which is negative 6. So because the derivative is negative, that means that your function is decreasing. If the derivative is positive, your function is increasing. So now we pick another number, any number we like, uh, bigger than 3. How about 4? So f prime of 4, that's 2 times 4 minus 6, so that's uh, 8 minus 6, which is 2, and that's positive. So that means it's increasing. Remember, if the first derivative is negative, your function is decreasing. If it's positive, your function is increasing. So from this picture, we can get all of the answers. So it's going to be decreasing over here, right, over here. So it'll be from negative infinity to 3. That's where it's decreasing. It's always parentheses, by the way, for increasing, decreasing. And it will be increasing over here on the right, so from 3 to infinity. So that answers the first part of the question, the increasing, decreasing. As far as the maxima and minima, again, we can get that from our beautiful picture. You see it's getting smaller, 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 and then it starts getting bigger. So whenever this happens, you get like this shape like this, you have a minimum. If this happens at a critical number, you have a minimum. So we have a relative minimum at x equals 3. That's where we have a minimum. Now, again, this has to happen at a critical number. So if this was like a vertical asymptote, uh, it wouldn't work. And you would find that out because... Uh, you would have to actually take this and plug it into the original to get the minimum. So you'll find out if it doesn't work, uh, because when you try to plug the number in, it won't work. In this case, uh, it's not an asymptote, it's just a critical number, so there's no issues. So plugging it back into our original will give us 3 squared minus 6 times 3, which is 9 minus 18, which is negative 9. So that is the relative minimum. So negative 9 is the actual relative minimum. Uh, however, if you want the ordered pair, the minimum occurs at 3 comma negative 9. So that would be the point on the graph where we have a relative uh, minimum. So that's it.